A lot of people have asked us if we actually intend to construct the 1984 Miss General Idea Pavilion, and the architect in us always answers yes. The pavilion will definitely occupy as much space on real estate as it does in the media now. Au départ, cette exposition, elle est issue d'un projet absolument formidable qui a commencé au début des années 2000, mais qui a été présenté au Canada entre 2010 et 2013 et qui s'appelait Trafic. Cette exposition a été faite par plusieurs conservateurs provenant, et c'est ça l'intérêt pour moi justement, de différentes parties du Canada. Euh, et je tiens absolument à les nommer ici, puisqu'il s'agit de la Vancouver Art Gallery, de la Art Gallery of Alberta, de la Justina Barnecke Gallery de l'Université de Toronto, de la Leonard and Helen Bina Gallery de l'Université Concordia à Montréal, ainsi que du Nova Scotia College of Art and Design University. Voilà, donc on a un ensemble de conservateurs qui se sont penchés sur la question de l'art conceptuel, un mouvement artistique, non seulement de l'art canadien, mais aussi, c'est tout, tout à fait important, d'artistes internationaux venus au Canada dans ces années-là faire des projets absolument importants qui ont été importants pour leur propre carrière et aussi, bien sûr, pour le développement de l'art canadien. Je pense à des gens comme Baldessari, David Askevold et même Daniel Buren, Yann Debetz. Donc, cette exposition, elle n'est pas que canadienne, elle rend compte de ce mouvement et de son importance aussi internationale. David Askewald, who was an early teacher at the Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, very important teacher. He asked artists to send uh, instructions for what the students might do, and they sent them by postal, by the normal postal and snail mail, uh, so-called today. And um, there are instructions by artists from uh, all around the world, essentially, uh, a lot of American artists. And, the students were given these cards to make the work and uh, really this started a whole different way of teaching, it started also a different way of making art because ultimately to make, an, to make a work of art from an instruction has something to do with how art school normally works but it also is um, the work itself, the instructions in a sense in conceptual art were the work of art, they didn't need to be executed, uh, the card itself implied what the work of art already was as an idea. So you didn't need to make it. Um, and that, in a sense, is an interesting challenge for what art school might be. Uh, the, the work was um, on account of an invitation by Charlotte Townsend Galt, who was a curator at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design for the so-called Mezzanine Gallery. Uh, and um, he sent her the instructions for a punishment piece, as he called it. And uh, the punishment consisted uh, getting the students to write the same sentence over and over again, just as you had to do in school when you did something wrong, right? So he instructed the students to write, I, and this is in an art school, I will not make any more boring art. So it's, um, in other words, it's what the students probably feel um, when they're making work and the teacher doesn't like it. So they have to repeat the sentence over and over again, and they wrote it all over the walls and so on. And then eventually, um, John Baldessari made it into a print, um, a lithograph, which was something that was also practiced at uh, NASCAD, and uh, a number of very important artists did lithographs and kind of reimagined and reinvented what that medium could do. Um, so that is Baldessari's own writing um, as to how not to make any more boring art. Yes, it's very, very nice. It, um, it's um, unusual, uh, yes, and warm and friendly and, and wonderful. Very reflects very much the spirit of this uh, town. Yes, uh, a great, a great food. Yeah. Cet 
cette expo était vraiment intéressante parce qu'elle nous permet de situer d'ouest en est euh, un mouvement qui a été certes très diversifié, mais qui a eu euh, une, une importance locale, par exemple à Vancouver, dans les Prairies, à Toronto, à Montréal, jusque dans les provinces maritimes, plus précisément à Halifax. Donc un mouvement avec de, de, une forte présence locale, mais qui en même temps impliquait, un peu pour la première fois au Canada, des réseaux de relations entre les artistes. Un réseau qui n'existait absolument pas avant. On connaissait par morceaux certains artistes, certaines régions, mais là, c'est vraiment un mouvement d'envergure absolument exceptionnel qui naît. To elect aldermen, uh, people to the parks board, school board, and of course the mayor. Some people say that to run for the mayor's chair, you have to be some sort of a nut, though. Amazingly enough, there is a nut running for mayor in Vancouver. He's appropriately named Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut's a member of the Peanut Party and is the only candidate in the civic election who doesn't make long speeches or give long-winded campaign promises. I'm standing in front of the a work of General Ideas and it's um, from a series of, it's actually a small excerpt from a series of what they called show cards, which basically explain uh, in some, it, and theorize what their endeavor was. So there's a lot there um, because uh, we can decipher from it um, their ideas about what a museum is, how they would Uh, think about museum spaces, how they think about the ritual of art making and its, and its kind of dissemination in the world. Uh, they talk about uh, beauty pageants, they talk about ideals. Um, it's a kind of, it's almost um, a kind of macrocosm of general idea. And if you look close, you will find almost everything that their endeavor was in the late 1960s and early 1970s and um, in their projection into the future, you will almost find it all here as if this work in a sense is a key to unlock the general idea universe. So, You know, I started as an, as an artist in Canada in the late 60s. General Idea started in 69. And at that time, I mean, and really to a large extent today, uh, Canada is a kind of linear country in terms of the population. Uh, something like 90% of the population live within 100 miles of the US border. And so it's a country 100 miles high and 5,000 miles long. And this means that in order for the country to exist at all, it has to be very conscious of media. And Canada has always had media as its specialty. So the Canadian government put a lot of emphasis on uh, supporting magazines, television, all forms of media. And I think the Can Canadian consciousness evolved around an idea of media. And in a way, that's a very conceptual kind of frame of mind. Uh, so, for example, if we think of um, Marshall McLuhan, probably the most famous Canadian in terms of uh, media. Uh, so Canada is a country about media. And that's true in the art world as much as it is in any other world. Toronto at that time was extremely, at that time was extremely provincial. There was no, um, there was no real sense of being part of a larger art world out in the world. There was no sense of a national community. Um, but around 1970, uh, I think it's 70, the Canada Council uh, d developed something it called the Travel Grant. And with the travel grant, uh, Canadian artists uh, could uh, get money to travel to another city, to do research, to be present at an opening of their work, so on and so forth. And suddenly, uh, Canadian artists uh, across the country were traveling back and forth and getting to know each other. And there was a, 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 kind, of, um, well, a kind of communication and a discussion and a dialogue started to flow back and forth along the country. And because there was no money for something like shipping paintings or something like that, the work that we were doing was entirely media-based and conceptual because that was something that, uh, that was something that we could send across the country cheaply um, and easily. Um, and so Canada became known very quickly, in fact, for video art. 
Uh, and by the end of the 70s, I think in 1980, uh, the Canadian pavilion at the Venice Biennale was entirely uh, Canadian video art. I guess this exhibition, it's about conceptual art in Canada, but it has its roots in the Canadian um, artist-run centres network, because that's where those artists were operating. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the artists, in the, especially in the early 70s in Canada, were very interested in the idea of um, self-government, as you call it. Like, they weren't so interested in museums or commercial galleries. There weren't any commercial galleries. The museums were pretty bad on the whole, with the exception of the Vancouver Art Gallery, which had really exceptional program. Um, so the artists realized that they had to start their own institutions, they had to start their own galleries and their own media. They started magazines. Um, and uh, a whole kind of parallel world grew in Canada, which is quite unique. There's, I don't know really of anything else like it anywhere. Have you ever heard the word song, uh, 16 tons? You load 16 tons of when you get yeah, set up. Yeah. So it's about... Yeah, that's 16. 16 tons, yes. yes. But you're I changed the Sistine tons, yes. Because it's a Sistine chapel. Mm -hmm. But it had to do with like pointless work where you're, you know, the labor is exploited and, you know, uh, never ending, it's all depressing. Yeah, that's your system. Yeah, that's my system. <laughs> Alors, Get Hold of the Space est présenté, vu son ampleur, en deux parties. La première partie, actuellement, présentée jusqu'à la fin avril, porte sur un aspect seulement de ce mouvement extrêmement riche. Et nous avons décidé de l'axer sur euh, le passage de l'atelier à l'entreprise. Un autre aspect de cette partie de l'exposition, ce sont tous les détournements médiatiques euh, et aussi institutionnels. Au fait de repenser l'institution pédagogique, le mode d'éducation de l'art, euh, et là notamment le Nova Scotia College of Art and Design est un des endroits les plus expérimentaux qui soit dans ces années-là, euh, et il a vraiment une très grande place dans notre exposition. Un troisième aspect de cette première partie, ce serait vraiment cette relation entre art, idée et technologie. Bien sûr, l'art conceptuel, c'est un art de l'idée qui remet en question, bien sûr, la, la nature plus matérielle, l'idée d'expression individuelle artistique. Euh, voilà, donc la relation entre l'art, l'idée et les technologies. C'est un troisième aspect de cette première partie.